And did you not? Um, I'm guessing I know I know the answer to this, but um, do you not feel the pressure to go down a conventional route, of, um, or was it always something to do with um, teaching Islam or uh, kind of this whole this uh, line of work? Or no, did I you did, ever have? I did go on a conventional route because okay. after so the. I realized I, I'm not going to do anything uh, or I'm not going to survive <laughs> this kind of graduate process, graduate school process, and it's heading nowhere. And what was interesting was also at that time, um, there was a kind of financial disaster uh, in that part of the U of U.S. history. And so a lot of the universities weren't even hiring uh, professors like graduates. Mm -hmm. They weren't hiring. So I was like, I'm going to spend seven years in these programs it's going to be a pain uh, it's, and i'm risking my own iman and i'm not even gonna get hired like there's mm. a chance even if i go to a top school mm. like harvard university had uh, that year eight or nine phd philosophy graduates not one of them found a uh, tenure track position mm. so i was like <laughs> what and they had been in graduate school for seven eight years so i was like mm. this is not but I did go into a conventional path because I needed to eat and pay rent. Mm. And um, I was also married right after my undergrad. Mm. Uh, so how can I provide? I went and found a job. I went and found an internship completely outside of my field because that's how desperate I was and how desperate the situation was economically uh, in the job market in the U.S. at that time. This was right around the financial crisis, 2008, 9, 10, around that mm. period. So I just took the first thing that I could find that was halal, mm. uh, basically worked for a kind of uh, marketing and analytics tech firm mm. uh, and was in that job. And that I was in the corporate world in doing analysis and data product marketing uh, for seven eight years. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think many people would would think that. Which, but to be honest, yeah. I, I, that's better from in terms of um, the optimized Muslim kind of mindset because then it helps relate to people who are also working or within that environment or have worked. Um, so then it was after seven years you started al Asna or came back to teaching or what happened? Uh, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, seven, eight years of that I was writing. So then that's why I decided to start writing online mm. about evolution because I thought I have studied all of this and I had this kind of plan mm. that didn't pan out, uh, didn't work. I failed, mm. right? Uh, this mm. is failure. And so what am I going to do now? And mm. I have this degree uh, from Harvard. I have a master's degree. Mm. And now I'm just at an internship making minimum wage. Mm. Uh, and this is not even my field. So mm. I, I felt like a big failure. Mm. And then I thought, look, after a while, I got more settled into my corporate job. And then I thought, well, there's still time, like, or I saw an opportunity. Now there's the internet. I can write online. I can create my own blog. I can blog. So why not? You know, why not? And then if there are Muslims who are interested in that information, they will benefit from it. Mm. So I just started with like a, a very <laughs> low tech kind of blog and it was just writing. And alhamdulillah, that. All, all I was doing up until 2000, um, 2017, no, 2000, end of 2016, uh, all of that was, uh, anything I was doing on Islam was outside of work hours. So I'd work my eight hour job and then I'd do writing through the blog or uh, then I was picked up by um, Muslim Matters. So, you know, Muslim Arabs yeah. our blog. So then they were interested yeah. in the, the kinds of things I was writing. They made me a columnist. I was writing for them. Uh, then I started a Facebook page in 2015. So mm -hmm. I was just, that was all uh, outside of work. Uh, and I, teaching was rare. Like sometimes I'd get invited to teach yeah. Muslim 
because you had some on your YouTube channel that are quite old. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was very minimal, um, for sure. But uh, then in then in 2016, uh, I was recruited by a research institute. We don't have to get into that. But then that presented an opportunity to get out of the corporate world, basically. Mm. Uh, to get out of the corporate world and focus on teaching and writing and research full time mm. as a job. I hadn't had that prior to that. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's... that's that's really interesting. So then that means now I can ask you these. So you've experienced that whole office environment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you that the office environment I experienced for about a year and a half because after that, I got the opportunity to work remotely. Mm. So that, that provide, <laughs> provided an escape uh, yeah. where I didn't have to be in the office environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So I, I was going to ask you just to, to get, I like asking these kind of questions, right? So here's a scenario. You're in the office. It's Christmas time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you are the, you're in the office working away. Uh, just for content, were there other Muslims with you or no? At that job, at one point there was, there was a Muslim brother that I, I uh, helped okay. uh, get a position. So that okay. was nice because we would pray together, but okay. So if someone came and said, look, um, we're participating in Secret Santa, which is like giving gifts, right? Or they said uh, Christmas parties on Friday at this time. Uh, Daniel, you're going to be coming, aren't you? Are you the type? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's funny that you start laughing straight. But this is kind of the thing that people go through, right? And, but are you the type to do this? This is scenario A, where you say, um, OK, actually, the first scenario is you agree to it, right? Oh, that's fine. I'll see you there, whatever, right? The second one is you refuse, but you do it in a compassionate way. So you say something like, um, you, you say something like, I can't make it or um, my kids or something. You make an excuse, basically. Um, or would you say, I don't celebrate Christmas, so why, why would I go to the party? Something along those lines, not necessarily in a rude way, but would you say, um, yeah, I don't celebrate Christmas. Would you explain it out of them three? Um, which one would you kind of, or what would your approach be even if it's not within that? Yeah, I'm trying to remember back if I was ever asked to go to a Christmas party. Mm. Uh, I know that they, the company would have it mm. and they would kind of spend a lot of money uh, on their Christmas parties. And, but it was like part, like you have to sign up for it. Like, okay, yeah. you RSVP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm trying to remember, did, has anyone casually asked me? Did anyone casually ask me for things like that? I mean, they had more other kinds of events as well, like yeah. uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, a lot of drinking kind of culture. Or they would go to like bars after work or Fridays. And I'm sure I was asked. And I would always make an excuse. I'd say, you know, I don't uh, drink. I might, I might say just outright, I don't drink because of my religion. Mm. Or I would say, you know, no, I, I won't, won't have time for that. I'd make an excuse. And after a while, they got the picture mm. <laughs> they yeah. had that this this guy is like on his own. He's not like into our social culture. Mm. And yeah, I mean, that's I was comfortable with that because mm. I've like I mentioned before, I'm a in, more introverted person and mm. I'm fine with being the outsider. Yeah. That's just my personality. And even all through grade school, uh, primary school, secondary school, I always had that mm. uh, because there weren't necessarily many Muslims. And even even if there were Muslims, I might not have been like with them at the time because also I was Shia too. <laughs> oh, really? And, yeah. So okay. I became Sunni. So that made me, so it's rare enough to have a Muslim in this high school or, or primary school in Texas. Yeah. But then also Shia Muslim. So anyway, it, it meant like, because I wasn't at the masjid, the Sunni masjid. So the Sunni kids wouldn't necessarily know me and there wasn't kind of any family connection. So I was very uh, socially isolated, but it was fine with my personality. Like, mm. I don't know why. <laughs> mm. So then in, in the w corporate world, it translated as well and alhamdulillah it made it easy for me but i can sympathize with those who mm. it's not as easy because they don't have the same personality yeah yeah 